Hello everyone and welcome to session two of Top Tips from Galaxy Australia. Now, if you haven't been here before, Top Tips is a session where the Galaxy Australia team come along and give you a quick demo of their favourite tips in Galaxy under a certain theme each week. And then we've got some open time for questions and answers from the Galaxy team. Today's session is led by Dr. Tom Harrop. He's a bioinformatician in the Galaxy Australia team, and he's here to show you how all his tips for making sure you've got the right tool for the job. So without further ado, I'll hand over to you, Tom. Thanks, Pat. All right, so today's tip is all about finding the right tool for the job. So the job that I wanna to do today is mapping some mouse RNA-seq reads to a reference genome for some differential expression analysis. Um, and when you go onto Galaxy and you have a bunch of data sets in FASTQ format, there are actually a lot of different tools that you could use to map them. So um, what I'm gonna show you today is three different ways to work out um, which tool you should use for, or which tool is appropriate for this particular um, experiment that you're trying to do. So the first thing I would do, which is probably the most effective, but also kind of the most boring, is just go to the Galaxy Training Network and see if there's any advice there. So if you don't know about the Galaxy Training Network, you can just type Galaxy Training Network into Google, and it's the first thing that comes up. Um, and you can just use this website to basically look for tutorials that have been produced by subject matter experts. Um, and these are really good because they have, they're kind of best practice ways to do your analysis. So I said differential expression analysis. Um, I know that's the type of transcriptomics, so I'm going to go into there. Um, and then I can see that there's a lot of different RNA-seq raw reads to counts, tutorials, and um, introductions to transcriptomics. Um, and you can also, on this website, you can also just type your search term into the search um, box if you don't know what the what uh, category your analysis comes into. So as I said, that's a really effective way of finding out which tool to use. And I do that all the time because the um, tutorials are really well written and um, up to date. So that would be my first bit of advice. Um, the second thing I would try to do is look at the help sections of some of the tools you're planning to use. So I said this was RNA-seq read, so I'm going to look up STAR, which is an RNA-seq aligner. Um, and then I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom and look in the help section all the way to the bottom. And it says here, STAR is an ultra-fast universal RNA-seq aligner. Okay, and we're trying to do RNA-seq, so that sounds like it would be a good option. And then just to compare that with another tool that might not be the, the one we actually want to use, Bowtie 2, if I go all the way to the bottom there, it says Bowtie 2 is an ultra fast tool for aligning sequencing reads to long reference sequences. So we can use this with our data set, but it doesn't say anything about RNA-seq. So it's um, less clear that this is the right tool for the job. So they're the first two things I would do. But the thing I wanted to show you today is probably a bit more fun, and that's just to um, take your data set, um, make a subset of it, and have a go and see what works best. I've shown you STAR and Bowtie 2. Let's imagine that we're not sure which one of those tools to use to map our RNA-seq reads for differential expression analysis. And we've got a big data set here. Well, this isn't actually a big data set, but if you're doing this in real life, you probably would have a big data set. Um, and so there's not really any need to run both of these tools on these large data sets and you know, wait ages for them to finish. What we can do is make a smaller subset of the data and, and basically play around with that until we um, find what works for us. Okay, so to do that, I'm gonna to go to the subsample tool which is for subsampling sequence files. I'm going to select my collection of RNA sec reads. Um, as it happens, this is already a data, a small data set because it's just a test one. Um, but just to make it even smaller, I'm going to start with 750 reads. Typically, if you're doing an RNA sec experiment, you might have millions of reads. So you could start with a thousand or ten thousand, and that would already make your um, tests a lot quicker. So I'm going to run that. The other thing we can do is we don't actually have to 
use all of our samples for this. So I've got 12 samples here and that's probably unnecessary to run 12 samples. So I'm just going to filter the collection based on the sample names and, and maybe I'll just run uh, three samples. So to do that, I just need to make a text file with which is just essentially a list of the samples I want to keep. And I'm just going to pick these at random um, using the names over here on the right. I'm just going to type in the names of the samples I want to test. I'm going to call this samples to test and start that. And that will just give me a text file just with a list of those samples. And once that finishes, uh, I can use the filter collection tool to select the ones I want. Okay, so I'm going to take my subsampled read and I'm going to um, remove if identifiers are absent from the file, which is the same as just keep the ones that are in the file um, and run that. And then as a result of that, I'll get um, just a list of files that were in that, that uh, match the collection that were in that text file. And I was expecting three, but I've got two. So I've obviously done a typo in the, um, you can see I've done a typo there, but that's all right. We'll just keep going. That's no big deal. Okay. So I've got my smaller data set. I have gone from however many reads to 750 reads, and I've gone from 12 data sets to two data sets. So now I've got a much smaller data set and I can basically just take this and try all sorts of different things on it. So I'm going to try my two aligners and just see which one works better. So here's RNA star. I'm going to give it my um, filtered collection. So that's going to be the ones that were kept from that filtering operation. Um, I'm going to use a built-in index just to make it a bit quicker. And I'm not going to provide a gene model because we're just testing here. And I'm going to select the mouse genome. And that's all I have to do for star. And then just to compare, I'm going to run another aligner, which might not be the correct one, which is bowtie two. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing. Select the filtered reads. Um, use a built-in index. So I'm using the same index here, just so it's an accurate comparison. And then with bowtie two, I just need to tell it that I want mapping statistics. So that will give me two different um, BAM data sets. And I can just look at the mapping percentages and see which one worked better. So the, both of these tools will output stats and we can go through the logs and look at the stats, but it's also uh, just a bit quicker and easier to compare if we run a, um, another tool, which will just compare the stats for us. So I'm just going to run the multi-QC tool, which just ag aggregates the, the um, QC results from these. Um, so I'm just going to select my star output. And I'm going to add my bowtie 2 output. And I'm just going to compare the results to see which one worked better. Okay, that's all I have to do. And we can compare the output from the two different aligners. So this is star and this is bowtie too. And you can see with star that we've got a much higher mapping percentage between 80 and 90%. Whereas with bowtie too, it's down around 50 to 65%. So this tells us that star has done a better job mapping those reads. Um, got a much higher mapping rate and that's because it's specifically designed to map RNA sec reads um, and, and it can handle the splice junctions in the reads uh, whereas bow tie isn't. So that tells us that that we'd be better off using star in this case and now we can just go back to our full data set and and run it on that. So that's that's what I would do if I was trying to work out what tools to use on Galaxy. Um, that's a really handy approach. I, I recommend doing it whenever whenever you can, if you have lots of samples or lots of data for each sample, just to test it first. Um, you can make a new history and do your testing there if you don't wanna mess up your main history. But I'd also say just as general advice, this is a good thing to do. Um, don't be afraid to just subset your data and have a play with it and just try stuff and see what works. It's a valid bioinformatic approach to do that. And I do it um, all the time.
And of course, if you get stuck or you still can't find which tool to use, don't hesitate to um, reach out to us for support. You can contact us through the help page on Galaxy or you can email us at help at genome.edu.au. Fantastic. Thank you, Tom. That was brilliant. A really great oversight of how to pick the right tool for the job. Um, so we're going to open it up to questions. MultiQC, I thought it was just for FastQC, but you showed you can use it for star and bowtie. Does it work for other tool outputs? And how might we tell that these tools work for certain outputs? Yep, MultiQC is um, a tool for aggregating QC outputs on lots of different tools, um, including FastQC, um, but it can also read things like mapping stats or genome stats, all sorts of things. The way to tell what you can do with it is to um, go to the tool itself. And in this first drop down, there's a um, question which tool was used to generate logs, and you can just click here and have a look. So these are the tools that um multi qc supports directly so and these are all available on galaxy so any of these tools you can feed the output into multi qc into that and get that web page another question so you you ran two tools and and we weren't sure which one was going to be right and they might take a little while sometimes so if we've realized that we have run the wrong tool how do we cancel a job um you can cancel a job while it's still running um when the job is running, these boxes will be orange or yellow rather than green. Um, and if you click on the little delete icon in the top right hand corner, that will cancel the job before it finishes. Easy. So Tom, suppose I found a tool on a different Galaxy server. How would I check that it's on Galaxy Australia? And maybe if it wasn't on Galaxy Australia, how could I get it there? Yep. Um, so let's think, uh, imagine you've found a tool that you really want on Galaxy Australia. You can just go to the toolbox and type it in. Um, if it's not there, so if you type the, the name in and it doesn't come up, no results found, um, you are welcome to request that tool on Galaxy Australia. So you can do that um, either using the help menu and submitting a ticket or by emailing that email address help at genome.edu.au and we're happy to install tools that you need. Is there a way to see what tools you might be able to install? Yep, you can also go to the Galaxy Toolshed for a very comprehensive list of all tools that are available on Galaxy anywhere. Galaxy Toolshed. Um, so if you click on the first thing that comes up there, you get um, a categorized list of all tools that are available um, and have been wrapped for Galaxy. So you can, uh, if you have a favorite tool that you're trying to find on, on Galaxy and you want to know if we can just install it, you can just type your tool name in here, see if it's available. Right, and I can see there that there's 10,000 tools available in the tool shed. Certainly a lot more than in my tool shed. <laughs> so with that in mind of, of just how many tools there are, are there some other ways to find the tools that I want? And maybe if I don't know the tool name to type in the search box, what are some other ways to find tools? You can use the category browser in Galaxy. If you just have a vague idea of what you're trying to do and you're not sure which tools might do it. So you can just search for the file type in here or you can also use the categories here. So in this example that we looked at here, if I go to RNA-seq, I'll probably find star in here as well. Um, I know I will find star in here. There we go, RNA star. Um, as well as other RNA sec aligners like HiSat2. So that's one way of doing it. I would um, just note that these categories aren't definitive, though. So, for example, um, an RNA sec aligner could just show up in the mapping um, category because um, alignment is a type of is mapping. So um, that's not definitive. Um, and you can also talk to colleagues in your in your lab and see see what they've used. And again, I'd just say um, it's always useful to go and look at the Galaxy Training Network and, and see what's recommended there. Nice. And is there maybe a way to 
collect tools just for one thing? Like say I'm only interested in doing genomics on Galaxy. Is there a special place for that? Yep. Another way you can do this is um, um, we have uh, Galaxy Labs, which are just collections of tools that are um, grouped together to suit a certain um, purpose. So to find them, you can use this uh, switch sites button in the top corner here. So if I go to the genome lab, I'm going to find a bunch of tools related to uh, genome assemblies um, that are, are just grouped here, ready for me to install. Uh, to use, sorry. Fantastic. And I saw there was a couple other labs hiding there as well. So Yeah, so we've got a... Um, uh, gen a genome lab, a proteomics lab, and a single cell uh, and a sequencing lab up and running. Well, it remains to thank everyone for coming along to Top Tips in Galaxy Australia. I, I really enjoyed that one. I think I certainly learned a lot. So thank you very much, Tom. Um, so remember, if you need support for Galaxy and there's not a convenient drop-in session happening right now, you can always ask for help. Uh, through the help menu and emailing help at genome.edu.au. Uh, next week for top tips, we will have Dr. Gareth Price joining us and he's going to share his top tips for staying organised while you're working in Galaxy Australia. So thanks very much, everyone. And until next time, we'll see you later. <laughs>